It's another Matt Pay here with the True Jenny. Join me for another topic. This time we're talking about hypothesis testing with one sample and using t-test. A professor wants to know if her introductory statistics class has a good grasp of basic math. Six students are chosen at random from the class and given a math proficiency test. The professor wants to the class to be able to score above 70 on the test. The six students get scores of 62, 92, 75, 68, 83, and 95. Can the professor have 95% confidence level that the mean score for the class on the test would be above 70? So let us now start with uh, testing the hypothesis uh, that the, prof the professor made by stating the null and alternative hypothesis first. So let's start with the null hypothesis. Now the null hypothesis for this one is going to be um, mu that will be equal to, so according to this one, he wanted to have a 70 on the test. So we need to say that uh, uh, average here could be a 70. And then our alternative is our mean here, mu, is going to be greater than a 70. So let us go to the second one. Determine the appropriate test to be used. Since this is one sample and we've got only n or the sample size as six students, then we will be using one sample t-test. Determining the critical value of c, so we have here the title tail test because that was uh, greater than on the alternative hypothesis we have that one as one tailed and that is right tail we also have the information for the alpha since this is 95 percent confidence level so the level of of significance here is only five percent so this is now alpha equal to 0 0.05 the df here since we have our sample size is 6, so we have 6 minus 1, and that is equal to 5. So we have now the DF. We have now the information on the type of tail test. So we are now ready to get our value for the critical using the T table. So looking at DF5, this one here, and then that is 1 tailed. So we will be locating our alpha here or the level of significance, which is 0 0.05, and that is one here. We move down and then move across from the DF so that we can get the intersection, and that will be our critical value. So since this is right tail, so this is positive, 2.015. Okay, since we're done with the critical value, we are now going to move up to computing for the test statistics. For the, the t value and the p value of our data using our SL. So we'll start off with getting the mean. To get the mean, we just have to do the average of our data. So from here, and then we close that one. Then we get the standard deviation by having the STDEF. So we have this, and then close. Then we have our count. You can actually count that one if you've got um, a smaller data there. But if that is very large, then you can just use the count function and then select the data and then close. Then we have the standard error. That will be the standard deviation divided by the square root of the sample size. And then the degrees of freedom is simply the sample size minus 1. 
Hypothesized mean is uh, one that is being declared on the null and null, null and alternative hypothesis. Or simply the population mean. So let's go for testing the t that is for getting the t value. We just have to do sample mean minus the hypothesized mean divided by the standard error of the mean. That is our t value. For the p value of our t, all we have to do is to just do the t dist. And then we have our x, that's the t value. Come on, we have the degrees. Okay, so let me redo. That's not the t that's that I want. Okay, this one, this one is the one I want. Wherein I've got there the, the t value, comma, and then we have the degrees of freedom, comma, and the tails. One for one tail distribution, two for two tail distribution. So since we only have one tail based on the alternative that we have, all we have to do is to click on one. And then we close. So there you go. This is our p value for this test statistic. Okay, so we're now going to do our computing for the test. We're done with the computing for the test statistic using the Excel and we have the data information here so all we have to do is to supply so we've got our t value which is 1.705 I've rounded it off to uh, thousands place or three decimal places and our p value is 0 0.074 and then we are now ready for our decision making so since our p-value is 0 0.074 is greater than our level of significance, which is 5%, then we are right to do, or our decision will be do not reject HO. So meaning to say that the professor is right to have a 95% confidence level that the mean score for the class on a test would be above 70 so this is once again your teacher Jenny saying thank you and good luck.